Hi, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots, where we share knowledge to accelerate robotics. Today, I want to show you how to start building a fleet overview using fleet indexing from AWS IoT Device Management. This is a feature that allows you to build an overall picture of your fleet of robots, including how many there are, which ones are connected, what they're doing at the moment, and even issues that are occurring in the fleet. We'll take a look at what's in the console, how to set it up using a sample application, and discuss some of the pricing and next steps. Let's start by taking a look in the console. Here we are in the AWS console for the IoT device management page. And we can take a look here and start to see some of the features that are available. A lot of what device management does isn't covered in this video. It's got a lot of features like being able to organize your devices into hierarchies, being able to register a lot at once and hosting web applications. We're focusing here on the fleet indexing, which isn't obvious in the first page, but this box here, save time by filtering your device search, that's what we're going to be doing using fleet indexing. But before I show you fleet indexing in action, it helps to understand how the pricing works. So on the pricing calculator page, and if you want to understand more about predicting pricing at AWS, I'll link my video on it at the top, we can take a look at creating an estimate for the fleet indexing. We can search for IoT, click on IoT device management. Now taking a look at the fields of the estimate, we can see what actually costs money. So the number of fleet index updates and the number of devices, as well as the number of queries that are used. So the more devices you have and the more updates those devices are doing, the more that fleet indexing will cost. Also, the more that you query the fleet index to get information, the more that will cost. But if we plug some sample numbers here, we can get an idea of how much that is. So let's say we do 10 updates a day for just coming online and off again, and we have a fleet size of 20. We're also doing uh, 100 queries per day to keep an update of what our fleet is doing. Overall, that's so few updates that it doesn't actually count on our estimate. However, if we start plugging in higher numbers, like one update per second for all 20 devices, then we start to see the numbers go up. Seconds in a month is roughly two and a half million. So that would be the device online almost constantly doing one shadow update a second. And that takes our price up to around $112. So we can see that if we're producing a lot of updates to the index for every single device, then we need to be aware that the price will go up. Now I'll show you in this video how to index particular shadows, but it's worth bearing in mind when you design your system, how many updates are done to the shadow and which shadows are indexed if you want to use shadow indexing at all. Now let's move on to seeing the sample application in action. This is the sample application that I'll be using. This is a fork of the version from AWS samples, but I've added a couple of helper scripts and a new ROS2 launch file to help make this demo a bit easier to set up and get going with. If you want some more information about how to use the original repository, I have a video about that, which I'll link at the top. So taking a look at this, we first want to have a machine to set this up on. So I'm going to provision an EC2 instance for that. And we want to clone the repository. So I'll meet you back when the EC2 instance is up and running. So I've set up VS Code to connect to my instance. I'm now going to grab the clone link from the repository and clone it into VS Code. With that done, I'll open the folder within VS Code. Now this file contains setup instructions for the repository before my changes. I haven't added instructions for my changes. The only place those instructions exist are in this video and on my accompanying blog post. You can find the link to the blog post in the description. What we want to do is make sure that ROS2 tools are installed and there's a link for how to install those and also make sure a couple of AWS dependencies are installed, which are detailed in this repository. So first I'm going to install ROS tools. I want to install Humble Desktop and ROS Dev tools. And with that, our ROS installation is complete. We can check that by sourcing the ROS2 installation to give us access to the build tools. With the tools active, we can go into the repository and build it and do a Colcom build symlink install to rebuild all the packages. With that, I can source the workspace with source install setup.bash. And now I'm ready to launch the ROS2 nodes representing my robots. 
But before I can do that, I need things in the cloud to represent them. And that's where the changes that I put into my forked repo come in. I have a helper script to create a number of robots that the sample application can then use to write the shadow. So we can set that up by installing the CLI, installing some Python dependencies, and then running the script. Let's see how to do that once the CLI is installed. I can check AWS is installed by doing AWS version, and I can see the correct version number here. With that installed, I want to make sure I have the Python dependencies installed. So I'm going to go up one folder from the workspace and then use pip to install all the dependencies. First, I make sure pip is installed by apt installing python3 pip. Then I can install all the requirements in the requirements file using pip install dash r scripts requirements dot text. With those installed, I can run a helper script that helps me to create a number of things. I can do python3 scripts make things and then name all the robots that I want to create. So I'm going to create robot one, robot two, and robot three. Now here we can see that the things actually already existed from my previous run through. So I can also show you how to delete the things, which is to use the corresponding script delete things.py. And again, I can type the robot names and it will clean up all those resources from the cloud. Now I'm again going to run the script to create them. And with that, I'm ready to launch the sample application. I'll set the certificates folder location as an environment variable to make launching easier. And now I can use this launch command to launch all the robots that are available within the configs folder. If I create more robots, those would automatically be picked up and launch separate ROS2 nodes for those robots too. You can see the logs going crazy here, and that's because there are frequent shadow updates being written by all three robots. Now we can take a look at how to enable fleet indexing in the cloud so that we can see those updates and those things connecting and disconnecting. First, we want to head to the IoT core page. Now we can scroll down to the settings at the bottom and scroll down this page to find the fleet indexing. Here it is, and we can click manage indexing. Now we want to enable thing indexing using this checkbox at the top. And we also want to enable connectivity information. These events are when a device connects and disconnects, and even gives a reason for connection or disconnection. We can see those, and with the fleet indexing, we can collect those all into one place and see them over our entire fleet. With that, I can scroll to the bottom and hit update. Now, creating the index may take a few minutes, so you can proceed with the next steps, and if they don't work, then wait a couple of minutes and try again. Back in VS Code, we can see the equivalent CLI instructions. The easiest thing to do here is to open my blog post so that you can copy the commands directly from the page because typing them out by hand is a bit more involved. So I'm going to paste this in here. And this is the command to IoT to enable thing indexing in registry mode and to enable connectivity status indexing. It accomplishes the same thing as the console configuration just did. Now that the configuration is active, we can start to do queries on our fleet index. And to do that, we will go to the things page. Now these two buttons at the top, advanced search and run aggregations, both require fleet indexing to be enabled before they'll do anything. Now that we've enabled fleet indexing, we can click on advanced search. In this query box, it gives us some suggestions of things to search for. So we're going to search for all our connected things. Press enter to add it as a query and then do a search. And here we can see that robot2 and robot3 are connected. Now this is probably not reporting robot1 because the fleet index is still being built. Now that we've seen that we can check which devices are connected, let's do it an alternative way. From things, we can run aggregations instead. Now our query will be about our thing name being robot star, meaning all devices that start with the name robot. We can aggregate across connectivity.connected and set the type to bucket. When we run this aggregation, it shows that we have three devices with connectivity.connected. So there we have it. One simple command can show us exactly how many devices are connected at this present moment in time. Now let's see the CLI equivalent. Our first search is to return all connected devices regardless of name. And here it returns a full JSON description of all the things that are currently connected. And the only things connected are robots one, two, and three. 
but also return some extra information such as their connectivity status and the timestamp that it was last reported. Given that this is quite a big blob to parse, especially if you're running upwards of 20 robots, you might want to use some command line tools to cut this down, or some scripts to parse the information and just pull out what you want. In this case, we can add a call to JQ, which will pull out just the thing names that are connected. So by chaining it with JQ things thing name, it will report that just these three robots are online, giving us a much more succinct format. We can even wrap this command in watch, which is a Linux utility to repeatedly run a command and report the output. If we run watch, it will rerun the command every two seconds and show us the output. Here we can see that the three robots are still connected. If I was to close the script down on the other tab, these robots would slowly disappear as the fleet index gets updated. We can even use a further Linux utility to just count the number of lines returned by JQ. By using a word count dash L for line count, it tells us that there are three devices connected. Now let's do this an alternative way using aggregation. I'm going to copy the command in, and here we can see that the query string is thing name begins with robot, the aggregation field is connectivity.connected, and it's using a bucket aggregation, meaning that it will show all the different buckets that are available. With a Boolean field, there will only be two buckets because it's true or false, but you can start to see how the aggregation works. And if we were to have a field like battery level, we could bucket by the battery level, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and so on. Running this gives us a larger output than before, but gives us more information. So our total count here tells us that there are three devices that this query worked on, and that all three were true. So that's our fleet index with connectivity working. Now let's look at how to add shadows. Back in the fleet index management page, we can now scroll and find the add name shadows checkbox. Now this is a two step process because not only do you need to enable name shadow indexing, but you need to specify which shadows should be indexed. And that's because each shadow that's indexed increases the number of fleet index updates, which can incur a higher cost and slow down performance. So some caution is required when you're designing your system to factor this in. Let's add our shadow names. I'll use all of them for demonstration purposes and add them to the index. Now I'll scroll to the bottom and update. This will take a few minutes to add them to the index. So let's take a look at the CLI equivalent. This is the equivalent command. Now, a word of caution here is that when you're using the update indexing configuration, it will overwrite the existing configuration, which means that if you take a field out, like the connectivity indexing mode, then it will disable that feature. Make sure to include all the fields you're interested in when you're doing an update. In this case, we're using the same command as before, but with two new fields. The first is to enable name shadow indexing, and the second is a filter to specify which shadows to index. That includes all of our three shadows. Executing that is equivalent to the console operation that I just showed you. Now let's take a look at how we can query that new information. Back in our advanced search tab, we can now search shadow fields. For example, we can check if a shadow has a delta, meaning there's a difference between the desired status and the reported status. We could, for instance, add, show me all the shadows where the delta is true. There's a difference between desired and reported. However, at the time of recording, the query doesn't have the ability to search across shadows. Instead, you have to specify the particular shadow name. So I'm going to change this to robot one shadow. And then when I search, I get robot one as an option that I can look up. Now there's no extra information here. There's a link to robot one, which allows me to dig further into what's going on but I'm not seeing all in one place what's happening with that thing. Let's take a look at what happens with the CLI. Let's repeat our search for all connected devices and see what new information comes through. This time we can see more fields. The shadow is now reported, including the particular shadows and all of the fields inside. A word of caution here is that only particular fields can be indexed from a shadow, which is simple types or arrays of simple types. There's more information available in the documentation if you're worried about whether your shadow can be indexed correctly. Now here we can see that there's a reported digit and there's a desired digit which are different. What we can do now is take this same information and start trying to parse it using JQ and other tools. Now let's say that we want a map of all the robots and the desired digit. 
from the sample application. We can use JQ to parse the output of this command and show us just the shadow name and the desired digit. This is the command to do so. We're performing the same search, except that we're taking the output and running it through JQ, parsing the shadow contents and pulling out the desired digit. Now, when we run this, we can see robot3shadow has a desired digit of 97. And again, we can wrap this in watch to see a live output of what our fleet is doing. Now we can see that this is updating every two seconds to include the new desired digit. And so with one CLI command, we can get an overview of what our fleet is doing at any moment in time. We can also change this command to pull out other information or run it through other tools to get more rich detail into what our fleet is doing. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is a feature of IoT device management, and there's more here to help you build a fleet overview. You can start to visualize it, for example, using Fleet Hub or using CloudWatch metrics. It's possible to output a metric to CloudWatch based on a query. So for example, you could query for all your things named robot that are currently connected and report that to CloudWatch. Then not only can you build a dashboard from that, but you can start to alarm on some of this data. It's possible using AWS to send yourself a text message when your fleet's average battery level is below a particular amount. Once your robots are connected to the cloud and data is flowing, you can set up monitoring, alarms, and different actions to take upon the information coming in, all without deploying any of your own infrastructure. And with that, our fleet index is built, and we can start to see the type of queries and aggregated data that we can get from it. We've also seen some of the next steps, like producing metrics using queries that are input to CloudWatch metrics. That means that you can start to monitor them, build dashboards from them, and even set alarms on them so that you can make sure that all your robots have enough battery level on average. Now it's your turn. Try it out for yourself and let me know how it goes. Remember, frequent updates to the index will incur higher costs, so be careful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.